So bismillah walhamdulillah wassalatu wassalam ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam inshallah today i want to talk about the you can say the description of dabbatul ard and i want to cover a lot of subjects but today you have to put on your thinking caps because i'm not going to give you the answer uh, I'm not going to give you the answer about how to take all of this, which I'm going to share with you. How do you take this? How do you analyze this? How do you understand this? I'm going to, I'm going to show you some things and I'm going to show you how to analyze this information, uh, how to think, uh, in terms of how to have a methodology that will help you think and analyze this information. Okay. So I uh, chose a few different tafasir, uh, about like maybe around 10 and then some of the uh, dictionaries of Arabic language, some of the aspects that are mentioned there regarding the word dabba. And then, of course, uh, I want to look at Quran and the word dabba. Uh, but you'll, and, and then I want to talk about two different aspects of this dabba tul ard. Okay. Let us start, inshallah, bismillah, with the first point, inshallah. Okay. The first point is, Su'ila an Ali radiallahu anhu. Now remember, I want you to put on your thinking caps, please. Okay, your thinking caps, please. So ila an Ali radiyallahu anhu faqal radiyallahu anhu. He said, "Amma, uh, uh, amma wallahi." Uh, Ali said, "As for that dabba, okay, wallahi ma laha dham. It has no tail. Wala wa in laha lahya, but it has a beard, and then the." Uh, the Mufassir, okay, the Mufassir of this Tafsir, uh, who is, uh, this is, uh, Ibn Abdul, Abdul Salam, okay, Ibn Abdul Salam, this is from him, Hishara annaha min al ins, and he says, this is Hishara, this is an indication that Dabbatul Ard is amongst the human beings, not amongst the, uh, the animals, okay, now, in one of the qamus, uh, if I have time, I will show it to you. It actually mentions dabba could be referring to humans and jinns. Okay, so ishara al ila annaha min al ins. Okay, so this is the point I wanted to make from this tafsir that was uh, because a lot of different points were made and some of the points are the same throughout, but I'm bringing together many different narrations and then I need you to have your thinking caps on so that you can also when you run into this issue which a if, if you do tafsir and you do hadith and you're studying Islam you'll run into this issue many times okay which is I'll explain what it is but just keep your thinking caps on Ali radiallahu anh, he said okay amma wallahi ma laha min dham ma laha dhambun wa inna laha lahya wallahi he has no tail Okay, it's not an animal. But it's called Dabbatul Ard. Wait, it doesn't have a tail, but it has a beard, and it's called Dabbatul Ard, the creature of the earth. And whenever the word Dabba generally is used in Quran, it's used for animals. Okay, but maybe there's something more to this. مَا وَاللَّهِ مَا لَهَا مِنْ ذَمْ وَإِنَّ لَهَا لَحْيَةٌ إِشَارَةٌ إِلَىٰ أَنَّهَا مِنَ الْإِنْسِي Okay. So now let us look at the uh, next uh, tafsir that we have. Okay. Uh, so, fil hadith. Okay. Uh, and then he, this is Nasafi, Imam Nafsafi. I used him yesterday too. But I'm going to read a little bit more. Innaha hiya jassasa. It is jassasa. Okay. Wa fil hadith, tawluha sit'una zira'an. It is 60 meters. La yudrikuna talab. Talib. Very interesting words. La yadrikuna talib. The one who desires it cannot reach it. This thing that we're calling dabbatul ard. Okay. Fil hadith tawlan sit'una zira'an. La yadrikuna talib. Wa la yaftunaha harib. Nor can someone who runs away from it flee from it. Okay. He can't lose it. Okay. If you run away from it, you can't lose it. So this is now the description of Dabbatul Ard. Now, put on your thinking caps and tell me what is this all pointing to? Okay, and then I will share with you 
the answer to that. And then Imam Naf Nafasi, he, what? He describes this Dabbatul Ard. So it says, Qila, it is said, Laha Ra'sul Thawr. It has the head of an ox. Wa Aynul Khinzir. And the ear, the eyes of a pig. Wa Uznun Fil. It has the ears of the elephant. Qarnul Il. The horns of a deer. Unukun Na'ma. And it uh, has the neck of an ostrich. Wa Sadru, sadru Asad, and it has the chest of a lion. Walonun uh, Namar, and the color of a tiger. Wa Khasarata Hurra, like Abu Huraira, Hurra. Okay, it has the loins, the private parts of a cat, a male cat. Wa Dhambul Kabish, and the tail of a ram. Wa khafful ba'ir and the the khaf the the feet you can say of the of the uh, camel. Wa ma bayna mufassilain ithna ashara zira'an. Okay, and then between any two joints of his body, there are ithna ashara zira'an. There are twelve meters. Okay, twelve meters between any uh, the joints of his body. Okay. So this is Dabbatul Ard as described in the Riwayat. Okay? So now I want you to have your thinking caps and tell me where is this taking you? Now a lot of you may be confused, but you just need to think critically. And the great Mufassir of the Tafsir, the great Tafsir Baharul Muhid, <laughs> when he looked at all the different narrations regarding uh, this uh, Dabbatul Ard, what did he say? Now, put on your thinking caps. Okay. Uh, first, I want to read what he said. And then he has some interesting grammatical issues and points. Okay. He says, اختلفوا في محيتها. They differed on its nature and its true nature. وشكلها and how it looks. ومحل خروجها on where it will come out from. وأدد خروجها and how many will come out from there. وَمِقْدَارِ مَا تَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا And the amount of that which will come out from it. وَمَا تَفْعَلُ مَا تَفْعَلْ بِالنَّاسِ And what he will do with the people. وَمَا الَّذِي تَخْرَجُ بِهِ And what will come out from him. اِخْتَلَفُوا مُطَّرِّيًّا مُعَارَدًا بَعْضُهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ And they differed with one another. Okay. وَيَكْذِبُ بَعْضُهُ بِبَعْضٍ And they made a lie of one another. These narrations when you put them all together. فَتَرَحْنَا ذَكَرُهُ Imam of Bahru al-Muhiti says, we left mentioning this, left all these different narrations regarding anything about him, because what? لِأَنَّ نَقْلَهُ تَصْوِيدُ الْوَرَقِ I mean, subhanAllah, I've never seen someone write such words in a, an official tafsir book. This is like, لِأَنَّ نَقْلَهُ تَصْوِيدُ الْوَرَقِ Writing anything about this Dabbatul Ard in terms of how big it is, what it looks like, where it is, and all it does, and everything, he says is what? It is wasting the page, making the page, page black, blackening your page and wasting it bima la yusha for something that has no correctness in it. It is a waste for the times meaning the Zaman for the one generation, Naqlahu, to even copy these narrations from one generation to the next generation is a waste of time. This is what the Imam of Bahru al-Muhid, he says about the, what? About the description of uh, Dabbatul Ard. And then the Sahib Bahru al-Muhid, he writes uh, before this point, okay? So I was asking you to put on your thinking caps. And so one of the conclusions you can reach to is the same conclusion that the Imam of Bahrul Muhit reaches, which is to look at all these narrations and how they differ with one another, and then you simply say, since they negate each other, I'm not going to even bother. But here's the small problem we still have. And the small problem we have is that while if there are narrations and ahadith that contradict each other, we can throw them away and not worry about it. But if something is mentioned in the Quran, 
uh, it cannot be ignored at the same time. And so we have to find our answer through the Qur'an. Now, the Sahib al-Bahr al-Muhit, he says about this, one point from the Qur'an about this that I thought was interesting. رُوِيَ أَنَّهُ يَخْرُجْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَلَدْ And it has been narrated that he will come out from every land. As you know, there are many narrations. He'll come out from Mecca and from Safa and Marwa area. Okay, يَخْرُجُ مِنْ كُلِّ بَلَدْ دَابَ مِمَّا هُوَ مُثْبُوتْ نَوْعَهَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Okay, لَيْسَتْ وَحْدَ It is not one. فَيَكُونُ قَوْلُهُ دَابَ As for the statement of Allah, دَابَ It is اسمُ الْجِنْس It's a genesis. Okay, so if I say like, uh, you know, I'm thinking of an example. If I said horse came out. If I say the horse came out and we've never seen a horse, the horse came out, or the alien came out, uh, I could be referring to a genesis, in, even though it's singular, but it's referring to the plurality of it, uh, if you understand what I'm saying. Okay, now uh, this is uh, Imam of uh, Bahr al Muhid. Uh, this tafsir is very interesting because it says, uh, Arba. He has four legs, right? Uh, and then it says, by the way, this tafsir is Gharaibul Quran wal Raibul Furqan. Okay? Uh, so now let's go back uh, to the point that was being made. Waragabul um, Warish. And he has furs and, uh, uh, you know, feathers. Wa jinahan. Okay, and it has uh, two wings. Okay, and uh, then it says about him after the description I've already been through. Uh, it says about him that he is in uh, sihab. His head will reach the clouds. Okay, and Abu Hurairah radiAllahu anhu narrates ma bayna qarniha. What is between its uh, the qarn the the horns? Uh, okay, a man can sit firmly on his head uh, as a rider on his head. Okay, so this is some of the other narrations uh, about him, uh, about uh, this Dabbatul uh, Ard. So I think now you must be appreciating what the Imam of Sahibul Bahrul Muhith wrote. He said, just, you know, forget all this. This is not making any sense. It's contradicting. Their narrations, it comes from each land. Their narrations, it comes only from Mecca. Their narrations, it reaches the uh, the clouds. Their narrations, it has no tail. Their narrations, that say it has tails. Their narrations, so you get my point, right? And uh, we'll look at a few more, and then I'm going to make some important, very, 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 very important points, okay? Now, in Tafsir, uh, let me show you. Uh, this is Tafsir al Bab fi Alum al Kitab ibn Ad. This is a very good Tafsir book, by the way. Uh, but what I want to share with you is he uh, quotes uh, some of the same stuff uh, that makes it look like it's not an animal at all. Uh, and then, La yudriku ha talib, whoever desires it cannot find it. Uh, and then, Wa ya'jiz ha harib, and then the one who runs away from it can't run away from it. حتى أن أن رجل ليقوم تعوز منها بالصلاة until a man will start praying to seek refuge from it فتأتيه من خلف and then that دابة الأرض will come behind him فتقول يا فلان أن تصلي oh man you're praying فتقبل عليها بوجهه فتبسمه في وجهه and he'll look at him face to face and smile in his face what يَتَجَاوَزُونَ النَّاسِ بِدِيَارِهِمْ And this animal will live with the people in their houses. وَيَسْتَطِحُونَ فِي سَفَارِهِمْ أَسْفَارِهِمْ And it will accompany them in their travels. وَيَشْتَرُكُونَ فِي أَمْوَالِ And people will share with him in their wealth. يَعْرِفُ الْكَافِرِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِ It will know the kafir from the mu'min. يُقَالِ الْمُؤْمِنِ يَا مُؤْمِنِ وَلِلْ كَافِرْ يَا كَافِرْ It will say to the, it will know the kafir from the mu'min and will say to the mu'min, O mu'min, and will say to the kafir, O kafir. Then there are other narrations that uh, its face will be like the man 
its body will be like the bird, etc., uh, etc. Et I don't have, uh, don't want to go into all of the narrations. So I also want to bring this uh, point up. The Imam Suyuti in his Tafsir Darul Manthur fi Tafsir al Ma'thur, he mentions this over and over again. But what is it? Uh, when will it appear? Now one opinion is this will appear after the sun rises from the west. It'll appear at the end, uh, as you know. But in contrast to that, there are other narrations that say, إِذَا لَمْ يَعْمُرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ When they will no longer enjoin good. وَلَمْ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ When they will not forbid evil. Okay, And this is repeated over and over again. And so some people have the opinion he'll come at the very end. And then some people say, no, it's actually before that. Okay. The next tafsir uh, is also very interesting. And then... Uh, in one of the narrations, it says, "Wajhahu rajul wa baqiya khalqahu tayr." The creation of his face is like the human being, and the rest of his body is like a tayr, like the birds. Okay, and uh, this is mentioned in the Tafsir al Ishab al Aql, Aql al Salim fi Mazaya al Kitab al Karim. Okay, so there are all these narrations. So the in the Hashi of Imam Safwa in his Tafsir of uh, explanation of Tafsir uh, of Jalalain, he mentions what? Uh, he mentions uh, that it is just Sasa. He is just Sasa. That is the, the Dabbatul Ard. وَوَرَدَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ قَوْلُهَا سِتْعُونَ زِرَاءً بِذْرَاءِ آدَمْ عَلَيْهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ It'll be 16 meters long, just like Adam alayhi صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ لَا يُدْرِكُهُ الطَّالِبِ The one who wants it can't reach it. وَلَا يَفْتُونَ حَارِبْ And the one who runs away from it can't run away from it. And then there are other narrations that he mentions about how it'll have the staff of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and the ring of Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam. This one's a very famous one, so that's why I'm not mentioning it. But almost many of the tafsir books mention this and that, you know, he'll go touching each person's face, hitting their face, and so on and so forth. So this is there too. Okay, so now the question, how do we understand a terminology in Quran uh, when when... When we have all these conflicting reports, this is what I want you to really understand so that you can apply this rule in in other places. Now, I just wanted to mention in Mahasin uh, al-Ta'wil, and I mentioned this kind of uh, yesterday, but I'll mention it again. Uh, in Mahasin al-Ta'wil, uh, again, uh, he also connects this with حَتَّى إِذَا فُتِحَتْ يَعْجُوجُ وَمَعْجُوجُ وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلُّ هَدَبٍ يَنْصِلُونَ that this is connected with the coming of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And in fact, uh, some of the scholars of Islam, they said that Ya'juj and Ma'juj, they are a type of Dabba. And ya and Dabbatul Ard is also a type of Dabba because of the word Dabba in it. Uh, even though some of the narrations show that it's like its head is in the sky and it, and that other people said, no, it's a human being like Ali radiallahu an. So now, how do we understand this, right? Also, uh, one last thing I want to point out that's uh, kind of important in this tafsir, the same one, tafsir al-ishad al-aql al-salim. Uh, it mentions uh, ajas, wahi okay? Wahi ta'abir anha bil ism al-jins. This is in regards to it being a genesis, the meaning ad-dabatul ard, okay? Wa ta'akid ibhamuhu bil tanween. Uh, and what he is saying is that because it's made mubham, it's made unclear by making the word Dabbatul Ard and who it is and what it is unclear in the Quran itself, it is actually a form of ta'kid. Uh, uh, okay, it is wa ta'kid ibhamuhu min dalalatil qurabah sha'naha. Because of the importance of this affair, okay, uh, and so, uh, so, so it is by actually hiding the words of who it is, it is actually trying to encourage you to look into what it is. So now here's the question, okay, again, putting on your thinking caps, if the narrations all contradict each other, and uh, so one opinion you can have is that, you know, we can do what Imam Suyuti, sorry, uh, um, uh, the uh, Sahib uh, Baharul Muhit said, that it's a waste of your ink to even go into this. Okay. But like I said, you're still stuck with the issue that it is mentioned in Quran. 
So how should we now go about understanding this Dabbatul Ard? So one thing we can do is understand how the word Dabba is used in Quran. Okay, so let's do that. And then, but I do want to share with you from uh, Lisan al-Arab, the famous uh, lexicon dictionary of Arabic language, uh, that amongst the different aspects of this uh, Dabbatul Ard, okay, وَقِيلَ مِن دَابَةٍ مِنَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِ كُلُّ مَا يَعْقَلْ And amongst the Dabba are all the things of ins and jinn. It includes ins wal jinn. Okay, so Dabba as the 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 Lughvi understanding or the the linguistic understanding includes men and jinn. So Dabbatul Ard could be Jasasa in the world of the jinn, for example, or Dabbatul Ard could be something physical in our world. Okay, meaning as a meaning of the word, its possibilities exist from both senses. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. So now let's continue on the. So now the word Dabba in Quran, we will now use this word to understand maybe what Quran is pointing to. And Allah gives life to the earth after it's dead, meaning there was a time where earth was dead, it had no life, and then it had life. Or after it rains, before it rains, it's dead, and then after it rains, it comes to life. وَبَثَّ فِيهَا And Allah placed in it, spread in it, بِهَا مِنْ كُلِّ الدَّابَّةِ Every creature, every walking creature. Okay? We'll go more into the linguistics of this at the end. Well, because I want you to use your thinking caps and tell me what I'm missing. Okay? وَمَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا طَائِرَةٍ يَطِيرُ بِجَنَاهَيْهِ إِلَّا أُمَمْ أَمْثَالُكُمْ And there is no creature on earth or no bird amongst the birds. So the opposite of Dabba is Ta'ira. Okay. Dabba is the one that's walking on the earth. Ta'ira is the one that's flying in the air uh, with its wings. Illa umum, except they are communities, amthalukum, like you. Okay. Inna sharra dawabi in the lahi, summum bukmun, alladina la yaqilun. The worst of the wa'ib, the worst of the beasts, are those people who are deaf and dumb and they don't understand. So the word Dawab and Dabba is used for human beings in Qur'an. Or for the jinns in Qur'an that do not have in, a spiritual insight. Okay? Uh, again, إِنَّ شَرَّ الدَّوَابِ in the اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ And the worst of the creatures for in, in before Allah are those who denied the truth and they don't believe. وَمَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا and there's no dabba, there's no creature on earth except on Allah is its rizq. وَمَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ آخِذٌ بِنَاسِيَتِهَا And there's no creature except Allah has control of its forelock. Okay? Uh, and then this is the uh, the meaning in which it comes. وَاللَّهُ خَلَقَ كُلَّ دَابَّةٍ مِنْ مَا And Allah has created every walking creature with water. وَإِذَا وَقَعَ الْقَوْلِ This is the verse that we're studying right now. Okay, لَهُمْ دَابَّةً مِّنَ الْأَرْضِ Now, what I want to uh, emphasize is if you look at the two times دَابَّةُ الْأَرْضِ is used in Qur'an regarding uh, the coming out of دَابَّةُ الْأَرْضِ and دَابَّةُ الْأَرْضِ in the time of Sulaiman The difference is that, that now the question comes could there be two دَابَّةُ because إِذَا وَقَعَ الْقَوْلِ And when the word of Allah comes true عَلَيْهِمْ Over there, uh, uh, over them أَخْرَجْنَا لَهُمْ دَابَّةً مِنَ الْأَرْضِ We will take out for them دَابَّةً A creature من الْأَرْضِ From the earth تُكَلِّمُهُمْ That will wound them or talk to them. But the other verse, okay, is دَابَّةُ الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا دَابَّةُ الْأَرْضِ يَعْكُلُ مِنْ سَا مِنْ سَأْتَهُ Okay. فَلَمَّا قَضَيْنَا إِلَيْهِ الْمَوْتِ And when we had decided to give Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam death, okay, مَا ضَلَّهُمْ عَلَى مَوْتِهِ They didn't know that he actually died. إِلَّا Except for what? دَابَّةُ الْأَرْضِ When دَابَّةُ الْأَرْضِ Because of دَابَّةُ الْأَرْضِ And what it will do, then they will come to know, oh, 
Sulaiman actually died. So now that is a different verse which I'm not going to go into. The only point I want for people who know Arabic to consider Dabatan min al ard versus Dabatul ard. Okay? Is this referring to two different things? Or is it referring to the same thing? Dabatan min al ard versus Dabatul ard. Okay? So this is something that the people who are using Quran to understand is this referring to the same or different? Uh, now, the major point I want to make here is that Dabba could be just Sasa because it's also used for the jinn world. It could also be something physical. It could be something at the time of Sulaiman والسلام, like uh, just Sasa. And it uh, could be um, something in the jinn world or the human world. It could be something that's going to come out uh, towards the, the end of times uh, in terms of the very end. Or it could be something that will uh, come out in the way that I'm mentioning it or trying to mention it that makes more sense because when you put all the narrations together so Dabba could be uh, referring to human beings this is the main point that I wanted to mention here inshallah okay so now uh, when you look at the Quran uh, you find that there are um, you find that so looking at Dabba Tul Ard in Quran shows that there can be two of these or that there is a much broader range in interpretation than simply going as that it is a certain type of animal. It's not necessarily a certain type of animal and probably not a certain type of animal if you look at the Quran. So something will come out that will be, could be human, could be jinn, it could be the coming out of many jinns that will walk on earth. It could be the coming out of something that will have the feel of an animal, uh, meaning it will function as an animal, meaning it will, it will, the wab is used in Quran, the word dabba, when it refers to human beings, it means human beings have lost their souls. So dabba tul ard, uh, could refer to a state. And I'm gonna, let me show you the dictionary when it, uh, that will make this clear what I'm trying to say. So now when we look at, uh, one of the other dictionaries in the word Dabba, I was going to pull out Arabic dictionaries, but this will make it a lot easier for me. And this is where you have to put on your thinking caps, okay? I want you to, in your comment section, tell me something I don't know, something I can learn. So I'm going to give you the different meanings of the word Dabba, and I'm using the Lane's uh, Dictionary Lexicon, okay? So let's look at some of the ones that apply from the Quranic perspective, okay? So they fit within the Quranic paradigm of the word Dabba because the ahadith are definitely confusing. Over here, what I want to mention is with the ahadith, you can understand this also in two different ways. One, you can do what I mentioned Sahib al Bahr al Muhid does. He says, forget about this, this is just a waste of time. The other thing is that just like the hadith of Tamim al Darmi, you can look at the event as it physically actually happened or that it happened in a dream state or like in another world. Okay? Outside this world, it was maybe in the jinn world or another world it happened. Allahu Adam, right? So these different narrations, if they have authenticity to them, they don't necessarily have to do with the physical world. They can be doing dealing with another realm that is allegorical and metaphorical, like a dream. So this also needs to be kept in mind. So that is one way to take the mubham, the 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 you know not clear, okay. Uh, not the clear things. And as a method of understanding things, you always put together the things that are clear first, like the muhkamat. And then you put together the things that are not clear. You start putting them together when they start making sense. And it may not be the first day. It may take a while. But now I'm going to go over the different meanings of the word dabba. And then I want you to put on your thinking caps and look at, based upon my last lecture, on the meaning of jar, the wound, the that it causes wound on people, and the meaning of it talks to the people or communicates with the people, and uh, with all these different meanings and how they all may or may not fit with each other. So let's take a look at this, okay? Dabba, uh, perhaps uh, uh, it is any animal. Uh, in like manner, uh, uh, an animal, okay, uh, that is crawling, okay, walked leisurely, gently, on an earth, over the earth, upon the ground, 
okay? So he walked uh, by slow degrees, okay, is also there. Uh, creeps about with ticks, okay? Uh, and then uh, he creeps among us uh, with slanders, okay? وَهُوَ يَذِيبُ بَيْنَنَا بِنَمِيمَةٍ he, he walks around us, secret, slandering us, right, with slanders. Dabat uh, al uh, Now, this word Dabba is specifically also used for, you can say, uh, more like dangerous animals, okay, also. Uh, this, I'm not saying within the Quran, but in within general literature, okay. Crept along, okay. Uh, it also this uh, it means uh, you know I'll come into the different um, uh, crept into the beverage or the wine something that you drink okay uh, into a vessel a disease or a malady into the body okay dabbatul ard means when from this perspective something creeping into the earth okay with the disease or a malady uh, into our beverage okay. Uh, and then uh, another meaning is to have much hair. Okay, so if you look at remember the meaning of Jassasa and how he was described with so much hair. So this you know wabar fur. Okay, fur upon the face. Okay, adaba uh, means to crawl, to crawl gently. Okay, uh, then uh, amongst its meanings are also uh, uh, cries. Clamor, noise, shouts. You know, dub dub. You all maybe uh, heard about the story of. Uh, usually, when we're in the madrasa system, we're all taught the story of. Uh, I think the poem is called Safirul Bulbuli, Sautu Safirul Bulbuli, the sound or the the sound the, the the noise of the bulbul. Okay, the the sparrow. The I think it's a sparrow, and uh, so you know. Uh, dub 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 right is the sound of the drum like making that noise dub 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 uh, those of you who appreciate that poetry will remember that uh, then uh, a certain foul or noxious animal uh, it's also dub also means the bear and so it's the constellation of the bear dub dub dub, dub is a single act of creeping or crawling uh, and uh, it has other meanings. Uh, it uh, okay. Um, a bottle, a kind of bottle or pot. Dabba also means a road and a way, a tariq. Okay. Yeah, Lisan al Arab also mentions this, by the way. Uh, uh, in both these senses, a natural disposition, temperament, quality, property. Okay. Uh, uh, I kept to his state or condition, his way or mode, manner of acting. Okay. Uh, then let us look now. A mode, a manner of walking leisurely, gently, uh, in a stealth way. Walking in a stealth way. So this also fits with Jassasa. Crept along in a soft, stealthy mode. Okay. Crawling of things, uh, of, of a certain territory. So when uh, the crawling of things uh, of this territory or this area, uh, and then signifies hair upon the face of a woman, um, signifies hair upon uh, the hair, having a lot of hair specifically, okay, uh, the pace or motion of a she-camel that can scarcely walk by reason of abundance of her flesh creeps along the you that scarcely can walk by reason of abundance of her flesh uh, to slander and so that would mean like a type of hoax or lie let's look at what the last page has to say okay yeah so a wound that flows with blood this one's interesting jaraha now you know the word jaraha to kalimuhum we mentioned this yesterday, one of the meanings of it, that he will talk to them or he will wound them. But the word dabba also means to wound. 
okay because that's what a scorpion and these animals do okay so jaraha to the a wound that flows with blood so this becomes now interesting especially in regards to circus 19 and i was thinking about talking about this a thrust a stab that makes the blood to flow okay uh, an animal that is weak, a long-legged ant, a quick motion or pace performed with short steps. But this is changing a little bit of its uh, form, the word, the form of the word. Anything that walks upon the earth, okay. Uh, Dabba applies originally to an irrational creature. So like scorpions, reptiles, beasts, okay. غير عاقل so in Lisan al Arab it mentions both meanings with aq aqal as well as ghayr al aqil. Okay. Uh, excludes birds uh, for this reason. Okay. Uh, a small beast, a small reptile, creeping thing. And as you know, the relationship between lizards and jinns, and there's a big relationship between them. I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, so that's basically it. Dabatul Ard. Um, having down upon the face, having much hair, fur is applied to a man and to a camel in the in the second of the senses. Uh, track or course, uh, those are the main meanings. Okay, so those are the main meanings. A, a manner crawling upon the earth. Uh, it's referring to uh, intelligent or unintelligent beings walking on the earth. It could mean a wound, uh, could mean a wound to the blood uh, system, could mean something coming into your wine or something coming to earth that is poisonous or hurtful to human beings. All these meanings are there in the original meaning of the word Dabbatul Ard. Okay, so uh, that is what I wanted to share with you, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. So now put on your thinking caps and think about this and let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire you uh, with what this could possibly mean. So, Jazakumullah khairan. As-salamu alaykum wa